Funding for Lucky Chow has been provided by... From the kitchen to the grill, soy vey sauces and marinades add an Asian twist to your favorite dishes. Recipes and more are available at soyvey.com. The way of Thai, our way of unique happiness, and it begins with the people. Amazing Thailand. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. The cuisine of Thailand, a sweet, sour, spicy, salty palate, the perfect balance of incredible flavors. Like most of us, my first taste was Pad Thai, but since then I've been exposed to so much more. Over the past 40 years, Thai cuisine has been developing in our country, from pioneering chefs who are leading the Thai food scene today, along with celebrity chef Jet Tila, whose family played a pivotal role in the establishment of Thai cuisine in America. Food is now found on just about every street in America. But unlike the Chinese and the Japanese, the majority of Thais did not immigrate to the U.S. until much later, in the 1970s. In 1972, my mom and dad opened a little store called Bangkok Market in Hollywood, California. And it was the first Thai market in the history of America. It was a place where you could get all the Thai ingredients. Today, Chef Jatila has invited me to join him on a shopping adventure as we prepare for a tour across the country, from Los Angeles to Vegas, and ending up in New York City at the famed James Beard House for a special celebration. But I'm not quite sure what Jet has in store. Over here. Gatila. Glad you made it. How are you? This is exciting. You can have a seat, relax. Welcome to my office. Thank you. I so love it, hanging out on the stoop. Yeah, right. It's like so we're cool. in northern Manhattan here hanging out, right? <laughs> yes. uh, there's a lot of activity going on. They're preparing for a, a, uh -huh. a upcoming festival. This is gorgeous. Tell me about this temple. You're sitting in the largest and first Thai Theravada Buddhist temple in America. Uh, oh. which, it was founded around 1978, 79, uh -huh. and I was born in 75, so it gives you, you know, some perspective. It's been here a long time. Did you come here a lot when you were growing up? I literally grew up here. My, you know, my father helped build this temple kind of big, really? brick by brick, so, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's basically the religious hub of, of all ties in the western United States. Wow, and, that's um, incredible. Yeah. You really are the royal Thai first family. <laughs> Yeah, we just happened to be the first guys who opened restaurants and markets. So I, I guess automatically we became the first food family. But you here. established such a legacy for Thai cuisine in yeah. America. Yeah, and again, you know, I only get half the credit because my family <laughs> did uh, the first, you know, from 1960s to the 90s, and I kind of took over after that. Right. It, it's a pretty cool space. We're protected by these two giants, what we call yucks. Uh -huh. uh, they are basically, um, you know, spirit protectors of the temple. Mm -hmm. It's pretty phenomenal. It really feels like you're in Thailand. Yeah, it definitely does. So I guess this is more of a community center for mm -hmm. LA's Thai community. Yeah, th this really is the religious and kind of, um, I would say, uh, you know, spiritual mm -hmm. and kind of uh, cultural hub for all right. Thai people in America. Is it a misnomer to think that Buddhist cuisine is necessarily vegetarian? I think most people assume um, that Buddhist food is automatically uh, vegetarian, but our type of Buddhism is not always vegetarian. Okay. But there are Buddhism, there, are, there is a type of Buddhism that is always vegetarian. We eat everything. I would think about the temple as being kind of the center of the mm -hmm. hub of cuisine during holidays. So tell me about what you eat at these special festivals, because I, we're going to New York, where mm -hmm. you're going to be cooking for Thai Son Khan yeah. at the James Beard House. Right. What foods are eaten at that celebration? Well, I was thinking Son Khan, and I'm thinking the temple, and uh, you know, yeah. there's always a curry, uh -huh. right? There's always gonna be fresh herbs. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna incorporate all of these kind of ideas into the Son Khan dinner in New York. You know what, why don't we start by taking you to the temple? I have a few surprises for you. My mom's in there. Oh. She set up a really fun little blessing, 
but a few rules of the road. Um, one, uh, you definitely want to take your shoes off before you get into the temple. And uh, never direct contact with the monks. Like, you know, no shaking hands. So follow okay, my follow lead. Your You'll lead. be fine. <laughs> Let's go. And yo, we want a part one, two, three. Danielle, this is my mom, Mary. Oh, and she was nice enough to arrange everything here at Watai LA. Thank you so much. What we're going to do is called a sangatan, which is ah. an offering for the monks here. And in return, they're going to give us a little blessing or make merit. So shall we? Welcome to the Bangkok market. Yeah. You've just stepped into the first Thai market in the history of America. <laughs> this is one of the largest Thai communities where we are right now in LA, is it not? Yeah. LA houses the largest Thai community outside of Thailand, period. Really? So much so that we're known as the 77th province. Uh -huh. This was the store to all, any and all Thai people in LA. <laughs> Thai food is four flavors. Hot, sour, salty, sweet. So we have to start with hot, which is spicy. So I'm gonna get some uh, chilies. Mm -hmm. We're cooking for a ton of people, so I think I think this is more than enough for 200 <laughs> people. What differentiates Thai chilies from, say, like a jalapeno? Thai chilies are known for their extreme amount of heat, right? Uh -huh. On the on the scale of the hottest chilies in the world, we're about third. Sharp heat, but it quickly drops off. So it's not that sustained heat like habanero or scotch bonnet. It's a sure. very different heat profile. Where is most of your produce from? Is it from yeah. Thailand or is it grown in California? My dad, 30 years ago, you know, kind of smuggled a lot of these <laughs> things in from Thailand uh -huh. and grew them in Mexico. Right? Oh, really? So between two zones, right? So in oh, the summer, all of our produce comes from the Central Valley in uh -huh. California. But when it gets too cold, that shifts down to Mexico. French people have their mirepoix. Celery, carrots, onions, the start of all French meals. Uh -huh. We have this trinity, lemongrass. I'm gonna give that to you. Galanga, this is a key item. You're never supposed to do this in the market, but I always recommend <laughs> people going for it. Um, the only way to explain galanga uh -huh. is for you to smell it, first of all, right? Most people sub ginger for this right. item. Not, there's no substitution <laughs> for galanga. It's got such a beautiful, herbaceous, floral spiciness uh -huh. to it that we're gonna need a bunch of galanga. And okay. the last of the Thai trinity is kaffir lime. Mm. Right? Um, extremely um, floral, citrus note. Mm -hmm. And they look like two leaves stuck together. Huh. These three ingredients are the base of all of our mian kam, our curry paste, and you can't cook Thai food without them. A few things that I wanted to point out that are kind of fun, that are uniquely, I really shouldn't say Thai because other Southeast Asian people get mad. This is a banana blossom. Have you ever seen one of these? I haven't. All right. the market. <laughs> but if I'm a banana palm tree, okay. I drop this flower. Um. As the flower opens up, Take a look what happens. That's gonna be a bunch of bananas. That's gorgeous. Isn't that pretty amazing? In this form, they're flowers, right? And we can uh -huh. eat them. We'll use these for curries. Uh -huh. We'll use them for soups, but not today. Did you grow up working in this market? I started here literally probably around six years old. As yeah. soon as I could stand, I could put items on the shelf. And as soon as I could do that, I could buy groceries. So there's no <laughs> position in this market I haven't worked in. The next crucial aisle here uh -huh. is going to be the aisle of all Asian sauces, mm -hmm. including, you know, fish sauce, curry paste, coconut milk. Do you cheat or do you make your own curry paste? You know, you call it cheating. <laughs> but I'm going to ask you the same thing. Do you make your own soy sauce? No. Do, um, do Italians make their own olive oil? No, they leave it to the masters that do that thing extremely well. It's always the non-Thai chefs that want to try to make curry paste. And all the Thai chefs know all the great curries. What you can do, though, is add to the curry paste, mm -hmm. right? If you add extra spices, which we're going to do to make khao soy. So curry paste is here, coconut milk, obviously. Okay, so what's the difference between the milk and the, and the cream? Coconut milk is made from the darkest coconut. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? We yeah, throw away the water, I see. Okay. You scrape the flesh down, and you make you press it into coconut milk like olive oil. Right. The lighter the coconut, or the younger the coconut, the sweeter the juice and the actual fruit or the meat ah. of the fruit. Does that make sense? So this yeah. is all made from that. So we've got our fish sauce, we've got our curry paste, we've got our coconut milk. Before you head off to the airport, I want to take you through Thai Town really quick and take you to one of my favorite dessert shops because cool. there aren't many of them, mm. and we have to enjoy this one before you go. Okay, let's do it. Welcome 
Garden of Ban Karong Thai translates to the House of Thai Desserts. You know, there are many places in LA that make desserts, and this is the absolute best. Mm -hmm. They have really fun things, that, some things they make, some things they bring in. So, you know, all rage right now in America is Japanese versions of Oreos and Kit Kats. Mm. They have those. They have all these other hand snacks that they directly import, but the best thing here is what they make in-house. So mm. let me introduce you to my good buddy. This is Alvin. Alvin, this is Danielle. Hello. Uh, so lucky. <laughs> pretty amazing. Alvin, like myself, is first gen Thai. Uh-huh. Were you born, born here? here? Yes. Right down the street, actually. Uh -huh. <laughs> and now he runs the best Thai dessert shop in America, I would say. I can say that. Oh, it is. <laughs> I can, I can definitely say that. Um, so tell us some of the things that you have. Like well, some of the, the big features of the well, store. Uh, Actually, there's like three main ones mm -hmm. that we have. Uh, one is bang chi, which is basically um, kind of like a cookie. It's, it's basically uh, taro, coconut, corn, with some uh, flour to kind of bond it. And it just makes it like a little cookie that we do, we do on a griddle. Mm. It's like that perfect kind of um, sweet potato fritter kind of taste. And, and in between, it's got like really sweet coconut notes. It's not too sweet. I mean, no. I feel like I could eat it for breakfast. And don't you find that in Thai food, there's always a hint of salt mm -hmm. in anything that's sweet. Is that pretty true for all the desserts? Pretty much salt and sugar <laughs> it's in everything. I, I think we need to try the roasted coconut milk too. Right here. Have you eaten one of these yet? No. Oh, good. I yeah. Basically, what it's made with is um, the bottom part, put a little bit of flour uh -huh. just so that it solidifies when you cook it. And then top part is actually a coconut milk with a, a little bit of salt. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, if you like oh, coconut, nice. this is like the perfect dessert, wouldn't yeah. you say? All right, last one. We gotta talk about Tokyo. Tokyo. Don't you bring over some Tokyo? All right, you got I it. I say it wrong. <laughs> I say Tokyo. You, you, you want to educate me? Well, technically they spell it that way, but uh, it's actually Tokyo. Think about it this way, like a pancake. Mm -hmm. Put a little bit of a pan and custard in the middle and just kind of roll it up. Mm. Yeah. And it's Thai. Oh yeah. Right. Tokyo well, doesn't mean Japan. No, no, no. Oh, hey, hey, no, no. <laughs> it's spelled that way, so. Yeah. It's well, funny, actually, you won't be able to find these in Japan. <laughs> right? Yeah. So are these foods typically eaten as dessert, or are they just snack food oh, that you can eat? Oh, snack food. Oh, yeah? People eat it all the time. I love that about Morning Thai tonight. culture, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, dessert Anytime. is not for yeah. no, after no. the For meal. sure. Yeah. I mean, the word kanom itself, uh -huh. it doesn't just mean sweets, and it doesn't mean dessert. It kind of means like a snack. Snack, yeah. Doesn't Pretty it? Pretty much, yeah. Thank you very much, Alvin. All right. Yeah, it's good to see you. So uh, you guys have fun. Then you'll have a good time, huh? Oh, this is amazing. I have a sugar high now. Yeah, right? Um, so we're going to take that sugar high to Vegas, and then we're going to take it to New York. I know you feel bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later. All right, thank, thank you. Yeah. Inspired by Chef Jet, I invited him to join me in Las Vegas. Home to pioneer chef Saipan Chutima who runs, along with her family, what has been called the best Thai restaurant in America. Saipan immigrated to the U.S. and cooked out of necessity, but her hard work has paid off. She's even received the James Beard Award as Best Chef of the Northwest, the equivalent of an Oscar to the food world. On the other spectrum, Portland-based chef Andy Ricker fell in love with Thailand as a young backpacker touring the country. After seeing a magazine article about Saipan, he was encouraged to focus on northern Thai cuisine. All the chefs from, from uh, Lucky Rice are coming tonight. We got a lot of work to do, I think. Yeah. Oh. Shall we go and cook? Years later, they both met at the James Beard Awards, where Andy was also awarded Best Chef of the Northwest. Today, Andy considers Saipan to be his anti-mentor and has devoted his cooking to bringing traditional Thai dishes to the U.S. This evening, for the first time, they're collaborating on a special menu for a group of celebrity chefs in town for the Lucky Rice Food Festival. It's a very interesting dish. In, in the north, it's made with this very complex spice mixture called uh, priklab or nam priklab. There's as many different types of priklab as there are people who make it, almost. I'm really excited to learn about how Kun Saipin makes her priklab. This particular nam priklab has maybe 18 different things in it. Lemongrass, chilies, garlic, shallots, all the dried spices, a lot of different things all put together. <laughs> okay, we don't have much time, so we've got to get to work. Ah, we're going to add a little bit of uh, galangal, some lemongrass, kaffir lime peel, met cilantro, <laughs> coriander seed, 
and a little bit of white car cardamom or Thai cardamom, Thai black Thai. peppercorn, which is called Pik Thai Dam Thai pepper. Mak Quen. Mak which is the the uh, the black um, prickly ash. Bai Gawan, otherwise known as bay leaf. South Paul, which is a black cardamom. Mm, very smoky, almost tobacco-y smell to it. Yila. Yila. So this is cumin seed uh, that's been toasted in ground. The process for making this is you grind it or pound it all together first. And you have to do this for quite some time in order for it to all come together. Some roasted garlic and some roasted uh, shallot. OK. Mm. The process for pounding this is you're releasing the, the oils in the spices and the uh, aromatics. There's a lot of stuff that goes into here. It must smell good. Most Thai cooks cook by the sense of smell. She knows when it's done, when it smells right. As you can see, this is very labor intensive. Uh, making lob in Thailand is often an all day long process. It comes up to kind of a wet paste. Prick lob in its wet version. All that wet stuff is in there too, but actually what you have here is something that looks not entirely unlike just chili powder. It's time to lob the meat. Lob actually means to, to mince. I'm gonna chop and Put Sai Pin's gonna tell me what to do. We have the, the beef. Yeah, beef and beef. And the idea is to mince the beef very finely. We're also gonna add some herbs to the lob. To, uh, to, and this, what this does is makes the smell of the, of the beef uh, less pungent. Saipin is going to yam the lab. Now we, what we have is called lab dip or raw lab. There's actually only really one way to know whether you've done it right or not is to taste, before you cook it, is to taste it raw. Mmm. So, tastes really delicious right, right now. Oh my goodness, that's <laughs> kind of spicy. <laughs> We're gonna head out to the, to go to the wok to cook this up. Just a little bit of uh, garlic oil in there. And as she's cooking it, you can smell the prick lob. The smell of the, uh, the, the chili paste and the garlic and the meat all mixed together. And then adding some more of the herb and the garlic at the end so that the, the herbs don't get cooked and the garlic stays crisp. Ah. There you go. This is finished uh, la pua. And we should taste it. It's very finely cut. Thai food is, is always eaten with a spoon and a fork, not with chopsticks. Chopsticks in Thailand are, are served at restaurants that serve noodles or Chinese food. Um, Thai people eat with a spoon and a fork. They use the spoon to pick the food up. Here, I will demonstrate what you speak. And your fork, <laughs> push the, the food onto the spoon. And if you try it this way, you're going to find that eating, it changes the experience of eating Thai food. wanted to thank the two of you again for this incredible collaboration and really magical piece. The James Beard Foundation in the West Village of New York City celebrates America's diverse culinary heritage. Tonight is the first dinner fully devoted to Thai cuisine. Hi, chefs. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. Cheers. I'm very, very
very excited to see regional food of Thailand prepared by our famous chef right here at the James Beard House. Songkran Festival is Thai New Year, and when you heard about Songkran Festival, the first thing that came to mind is water splashing festival in Thailand. But Songkran is more than just water splashing festival. Food play a very important role during this Thai New Year. So great to see oh, you. Oh, Danielle, it's great to see you. <laughs> I'm Isabella Wojcik. I'm the program director at the James Beard House. It's always so exciting to come to the Beard House. This is the fifth year we've yes. actually done a collaborative dinner together. James Beard was an educator, first and foremost. He was very passionate about food, about uh, sharing it with others, teaching. When James Beard passed away, his friends rallied to preserve this house because it had been so meaningful. These days, what the James Beard House is known for is a performance space. We liken it to Carnegie Hall for chefs. Almost nightly, chefs are coming here from all over the country, sometimes the world, to cook for a New York-based audience, essentially performing in New York. Tonight is a Thai Songkran dinner. Yes. Um, what do you think is going to happen? Oh, well, the thing I know is not going to happen is a big water fight, which is something that <laughs> happens in Thailand and around right. Songkran. Uh, or maybe, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> During the day, all of the scrambling restaurant behind the scenes work happens. The chefs are using a very small space. Somebody move the bacon in the box. Who move the bacon? Where are the limes? It's very different than cooking in their own restaurants. There's a lot to get ready for. It's gonna be a leaf, and then we're gonna put a little coconut, a little of everything in there. All right, thank you. I'm P. Sheyong. I've cooked Asian food my whole life, both Thai and Chinese. Just bring back to my childhood memory. I cook modern Thai comfort food. Sawadika, home Thai me, chef and owner of Nyam, and it's such an honor to be at James Beard tonight. This is Thai Songkram, the most important day in the Thai calendar. And it's really such an honor that we were able to bring three of the best Thai chefs cooking in America today together. And this is actually the first time that they're collaborating. Yes. Bring uh, two or three packs of dry fruits and the limes. Thank you so much. All right, Roger, thank you. I want to introduce my friend from Thailand, Srimala, who's going to tell us about Thai Songkram and how you celebrate it with water. Sadika. On the occasions of Songkran, I would like to give some blessings for Daniel. Could you please? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I would like to give you good health, good luck, and have a great success throughout the year. Thank you. I'm supposed to put Can this over my right? face? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what does this gesture represent? Uh, it's just when you have some blessings from the elderly persons, it means that it's come to you. Oh, yeah. You want to receive right, yeah, the blessing. Right. Oh, the blessing, yeah. <laughs> I love this. Thank you for adding this to our dinner. I know everybody's hungry, so let's bring out the canapes. This is Pichet's shrimp toast. Do you want one? Mm, that's really, really good. Yeah. It's like his modern take on a traditional Hong Kong shrimp toast with lots of butter. Good. <laughs> well, I know, I know that this is Jet's dish. You know, I wish I could tell you more about this, well, but I can do hopefully that the chef. Oh! Me so. chef How's it Jen! going, everybody? For my, my appetizer course, it's a um, very fancy Thai canapé. It's called Mian Kam. On a beetle leaf, we have an assortment of all the Thai flavors. So coconut, ginger, you have lime, a little bit of dried shrimp, and on top we tie that all together with a with a palm sugar jam. And you want to take a rounded side and fold it over itself. Mm. And what happens when you do that, it becomes a cone, and you just kind of put it in your mouth and enjoy those flavors there. So, so there you go. Fun up to you, everybody. Thank Have you so meal. much. Yeah. I don't think my fold was quite as good. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with Thai food is the visuals are such a major part of the cuisine. Right? Here she is. I brought you some delicious food inspired by my hometown, Chiang Mai, Thailand. Aww. How's everybody so far? Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. What did you bring? It's lab mu. So I put in pork liver mm -hmm. and I fry kaffir lime leaves on the top and have some chili chips, chili paste mm -hmm. that I put in like 10 different herbs and a lot of 
you know, greens for you to have it as condiment. Well, thank you. Thank you so you much. Guys. Thank you. Do you want the vegetables here? Just sure. reading up on this dish, and apparently, like, the northern no, style right, right, right. is a bit different because there's not as okay, much sure. access to meat. Yes. Piché! So, how was it cooking today in the James Beard house? It's really hard cooking with two prima donnas, I gotta tell you. I gotta, it's not very easy, you know what I mean? I don't think we had enough food. What's next? <laughs> For the last course, we have uh, coconut custard pie with pineapple and kefir lime. What was your inspiration? Uh, well, I draw inspiration from all my favorite ingredients and not Thai desserts per se. Uh, but uh, Thai cuisine, so I have mm -hmm. pineapple, coconut, and kefir lime. You're spoiling us. No, you guys, it's been such an amazing dinner. Well, it's a big celebration that revolves around food and water. Yeah? <laughs> but we have a surprise for you. Danielle, happy new year! <laughs> <laughs> happy new year Thank you, you for, for the blessing! <laughs> it's a blessing, it really is. I swear it's a blessing. <laughs> Cookies, anybody? Through my journey across the country, I've learned how Thai food has evolved beyond the beloved pad thai and chicken satay that I grew up with. Thanks to these passionate chefs and others, we're all beginning to understand the distinctions between regional Thai dishes. Through food, we're not only expanding our palates, but also our cultural horizons. To learn more about Lucky Chow, please visit LuckyRice.com. Funding for Lucky Chow has been provided by... From the kitchen to the grill, soy vey sauces and marinades add an Asian twist to your favorite dishes. Recipes and more are available at SoyVay.com. The way of Thai, our way of unique happiness, and it begins with the people. Amazing Thailand and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.